So, finally, here it is, the Linux on PowerPC video. Some of you really wanted this, but I've been holding off because it's kind of a lot of work and I really didn't care for it too much. But now I'm going to do it and I chose here my PowerBook G4 for it. And I will also choose an older Ubuntu because... Uh, I figured out that this version works particularly well on this machine. While 14, uh, I haven't tried later uh, than 14, but 14 wouldn't boot. It would kind of give me a black screen. And uh, if it would boot, it would go with a lot of graphical problems. So I'm gonna, with, gonna go with 1204. Now I have here version 1204 LTS, or I hope at least that it's LTS because I didn't write it on a disk. But um, I've got here 1204, and as you can see, I mean they released so many goddamn versions, but here we have our release. And uh, it's the only one which has this kind of different color <laughs> going with it. And that says extended security maintenance for customers. So apparently until 2019, this version will be still supported. So uh, I guess still this year. I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. If you ask me, it's just like the same length as 1404. So I hope this is the LTS. So what we do is we put it in the optical drive and we allocate some uh, space on the hard drive because I don't want to wipe out the entire drive. I'm gonna go into here, the disk utility and partition it. And okay, apparently we have only a 64 gig partition. Oh, okay, maybe I've had it on the past on here too. <laughs> because why would I format it this way? Oh, that sounds sounds good to me. So let's try just reboot. Okay, we're rebooting. And hold down the C key. For all these years, has the optical drive finally broken? Is it finally dead? I have no idea. What? It never really did it this way. Never did that before. Okay, we have here a white screen. Ha ha ha. And a black screen. That that one I'm familiar with. With this blinking thing up there. So Okay, that's that's the, the thing I remember. So we agreed here with this beautiful setup screen. So let's just hit enter. And when you have problems, you Go back here and type one of those things. And I think I already told you once in, the, in a video, but you never see this screen only once. You see it at least three times. <laughs> Maybe this is the one time where it works on the first try, but <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know, guys. It's, it's I've always seen this more than once. So, it found a display, now oh, that's great. Very advanced. Okay, so, okay, we got a screen. So while this is loading, I'm, I wanna show you this. Here I have 104 Fox, which is this one ported uh, fire, newer Firefox for PowerPC. And they're still making updates. I mean, that's just awesome. These guys absolutely rock. So I just did here for the fun check for updates. And it's sad. Here is an update available. 
So I'm currently here at apparently the feature party release for whatever that means. And, oh, party. Ah, okay. No party. This is no party. This is party. I don't know what it means, guys. Anyway, um, I'm gonna scroll down. I made this Apple style website and. It even still runs on G3s. So here is apparently the feature parody release 8, mate. Wow, I'm so much behind. Well, I haven't checked in a while. In a while. Um, and I always forget what processors, so they sort of uh, optimize it for different processors, apparently. So this is a 7450 processor. G4E, G4E. So let's download E. And here we have almost a loaded Ubuntu desktop. It's getting there. Slow and steady. Here it is. Yeah, I remember this. Pretty cool. Here we just go to install Ubuntu 12.04 LTS and it is an LTS so yes we still have support. I'm sorry for these lines on the screen, I don't know where they are. Move you away a little more. Ha, huh, can we get worse? I don't know what this is guys, I really don't. So, the challenge we face next is if it will find the allocated space we checked on before, because if not, because I want to keep OS 10, you know, I will have to go back to OS 10 and uh, repartition it with free space. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's see if it works. We will install software from third party shit. Oh no, I don't want to connect right now. So the Wi Fi works. That is a good sign. It's also not a regular thing that the Wi Fi works. Oh, and here it is. Yes, that's what I've been looking for. Here you can choose either between wiping out OS 10 or installing it next to OS 10, which is which we want to do. So how we all is we do is hit install, and then we're good. No, we're not good then. Ha ha ha! Once this has installed, there's some work to do. So to the guys who care about the 104 Fox, I'm curious what will be new. I reckon nothing, but at least some features and some security updates were included. See if it looks any different. Nah, still the same look. Okay. Introducing basic ad block. Oh, okay. They start website too slow. Box it up. Okay. Whatever that is. Play videos with QuickTime enabler. Uh, never really worked out too much for me, but yeah. Okay, so what release are we at? Feature parody release 8, mate. Let's go to Google Translator and find out what this goddamn word actually means. What does that mean? Aha, okay. Paritet. <laughs> Never heard this word either. Gleichheit, okay. <laughs> this is definitely not what I want to see. And it's surely not the right translation, but I kind of got an idea what, what, what I am dealing with here. Oh, Google Translator, always fun. Okay, so that's 10.4 Fox for you. Now on Linux, on the other hand, 
I think we even have the latest Firefox. Although, don't quote me on that. Uh, I remember years back you used to have it, but I'm not too sure if it's still like that, especially with this new design. Uh, I don't know. We will see. We will see. Definitely curious for that. So, here we go. Yo, it's done. This optical drive really sounds like it wants to die any second. Absolutely horrible noises. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on now. <laughs> when you listen to this, I mean, this is cruel. This is torture. Okay, so, please reboot, come on, yes, because it should tell you now, please hit enter, but uh, it glitched out a bit, so, total silence from the nice SSD. Linux boot PMU version something has the wrong firmware. I hope it's not the Wi Fi for some reason. But that was a quick boot, as you can see. So let's log in here in this nice Ubuntu. I really like the older Unity style more than the one they have now. I don't know. Uh, the, the current one is kind of weird. Maybe it's just something you get used to, but yeah. Okay, so. Okay, yeah, see, here we go. That's what I've been talking about. In the CD it worked, but here it says, the firmware is not, oh, the device is not ready, the firmware is missing. <laughs> oh God, I always hated that. Uh, so, what are we gonna do? Well, I really don't know, I have to hook up a a LAN cable and then get this show on the road. So yesterday I couldn't continue the video unfortunately because I do have a job. Unlike some of the other guys on this platform. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now I'm back and I can actually continue getting this Linux up and running. Now it's booting here OS 10. Why is that? What the hell? We don't want OS 10. We want Linux. But at least that uh, is proving that we didn't erase it. So we're back here at the Ubuntu desktop. And I've plugged in a LAN cable, so we have internet. Now the first thing before we do anything is update the system because there it could happen that it might install some drivers itself. I mean, I don't think it's gonna do it, but software updates are never bad. And I think there are gonna be quite a Quite a lot of because this is an old image so we'll go to the terminal and type the good old sudo apt get update and there it is updating the package lists and I'm curious how many terabytes of updates we will have probably like almost the whole operating system new but you know that's that's necessary. So, so you can see here the power PC repositories. Again, kudos to these guys that uh, still keep them up, which is just uh, insanely awesome of them. Because power PC is definitely not a new architecture anymore. Oh my god! <laughs> 
We got a whole screen of updates coming. Oh yeah. So it only says it's gonna be 98.9 megs, but uh, if any of you Linux guys could tell me why this is never accurate, it would be cool to know because it always tells the wrong kind of amount of data. But anyway, let's download it. Yeah, that's that's gonna take a while. Maybe not the downloading process, but definitely the installation process. So, we just have to wait, guys. Oh, and by the way, Linux on PowerPC is a hobby of mine. And if you want any more of this, please tell me. I've got uh, quite a lot of other Macs to try it on. I've got a Power Mac G4, I've got an eMac, an iBook G4, I've got a 17-inch PowerBook, as you saw. Maybe I get some Linux booting on this. I... Uh, I already did an, on an iMac G3, so check out this video if you're interested in that. Um, I've got a trailer or two, but it's pretty much the same process there. So if you want any iMac G3 Linux goodness, just check out my video. But on the other ones I've said, did I forget any? I mean, Power Mac G4 would be a good candidate. Um, eMac, maybe. Uh, it's definitely... Not easy on these old machines with the drivers, but uh, you know, it's part of the fun. So if you want any of this, please tell me. And while well, I've been rambling to you here, it has continued a little bit. It's currently installing a new uh, PowerPC Linux image. Here you go, 3.2.0-23, apparently. <laughs> Uh, which is good, which is good. And your kernel is always good. So, yeah, we just have to wait. Still no Wi-Fi. So all the updates have been installed and now I will try something I never tried. I found this article here online where a guy wrote that you just enter this one command and the Wi-Fi should start working. The command is called, wait, <laughs> sudo apt get install linux firmware non-free. So that should maybe get some proprietary stuff. I don't know. I've never really tested this. And I'm not sure if it will work, but yeah, I'm going to try it anyway. It's, although a little too easy to me you ask me but uh okay so apparently it's done and we got no working wi-fi yet okay let's reboot it and see if it works oh wow what happened now with this stupid command we got here bug soft lockup <laughs> the cpu zero is stuck for 23 seconds oh no So, one of those little weird issues, <laughs> but it booted with a hard reset. I don't know why it sometimes does that, but we will anyway try a different way. And that is the way I uh, have tried it before. These uh, power books. Ah, LSPCI, there we go. These power books have um, a Wi-Fi card or a package called BW, no, B43-FW, FW, other, FW cutter. Why do they have to name it this shit? But that's the one we need. So I'm trying to look here for it. We got here the... Broadcom Corporation BCM4306 uh, and we need the following command for it. So we type sudo apt get install b43-fw cutter. Okay, it's still in the repository. Found it there, that's good, that's fine. So, nah, okay. 
I'm gonna give it one of those five million reboots once again. Maybe that helps. Rebooting can never be wrong. Very nice. Now it didn't work in the first try. Haha. <laughs> That's the life with PowerPC Linux, but and the third try it did. Apparently, I messed a little up with the command because Ubuntu has this convenient site which has all sorts of issues listed. And uh, in Ubuntu 11.4 and up, the command is sudo apt-get install firmware-b43-installer and nothing with fw cutter like in the older releases which we tried earlier and that only goes up to 10.10 .10 for some reason so <laughs> yeah but in fact the other command worked fine so on the later ubuntu's you need only firmware b43 installer and then it should work fine so can we actually connect to it that is the next question okay password is in connect And will it connect? Connection established. Okay, so we have an internet connection apparently. Yes, we have an internet. Woo! Step number one is done. So now that we got this out of the way, the wireless, let's get going with the battery indicator because the battery indicator is not here as you can see and that is bad so I've got here this command which I have no idea if it worked last time I tried it you know that was years ago so let's see it's called sudo mod probe PMU battery <laughs> that's it seriously seriously so easy Huh. Okay, so here we have the battery, um, which is here. I'm gonna show. Oh, it said show them time. Apparently, the time is measured in percent. Um, didn't know that before, but uh, now I'm now I'm smarter. We're uh, apparently at time one hundred. Okay, <laughs> so at least the the battery now works, and if I unplug it. Um, the, the battery isn't the greatest anymore in this machine, so it should go down very quick. But now we know that we still have a battery, actually. And we also turn off the Bluetooth because that's only pretty much just wasting power. But the Wi-Fi is going to be on, and I don't know really what that is. Okay, so yeah, now we got that. Let's go on to the next issue. Good, so I just realized that it now changed to time, so we got uh, 28 minutes remaining, and that could be pretty accurate. I think it's it's pretty accurate, uh, but I do prefer actually the percentage, so if that can jump back to us would be good. Apparently not, we only can have either the time or nothing, just a little tiny icon. So I've got here some songs. Why do I have here some songs? To offend copyright, of course. Uh, but also to test out if the uh, audio works because I've had issues with this machine in the past where it just would not play any sound. So we've got here this stupid ass program which I just hate called Rhythm Box. And it's searching for multimedia plugins because this is an MP3 file and even though we checked install other software, apparently MP3 was just too much. So we will just do that real quick. Install. Will this actually work? Yes, it plays it, but as expected, we do not have sound. We only have uh, here seeing that it's playing. So now we go back into terminal. <laughs> and... We type the following command, sudo apt get install gnome alza mixer. I hope I wrote it wrong, all right? Okay, yes, I did. So we'll install this mixer. And the battery is going down quick. 
you are good if you have uh, 45 minutes of battery life on this machine. Also, the, the monitor is all the way up, so that's definitely not helping. So, now we got that. Um, we can go here and type in GNOME. And here it is. I mean, I could have done it from the terminal, would have been faster, but anyway. So, here is that. The mixer. And once this has loaded, if it loads, I don't know. <laughs> what is that now? I've never had that happening too. What if? What is it now? I really don't know. Okay, probably now know why it didn't work well. It says no sound card is found. Why is that? That also never was before. <sighs> really annoying. So, what are we gonna do? Well, we do the following thing. I've never done that as well. Uh, why can't it not just work? We do the following thing. Where is the line? I forgot it. Um, we go sudo nano etc modules and it's loaded so this this should be loaded i don't know it it, it should be here okay well it, it is here i don't know sound power mag is here very very bad maybe it needs a reboot <laughs> Okay, it's the next day. Didn't really care anymore too much. And uh, when I booted it up today, the battery indicator was missing once again. And so I figured that, you know, I was only loading it at this one boot. So in order to make it permanent, you have to add just the line PMU battery inside the modules file, which loads everything pretty much. And there it's gonna load and now it's now it's fine. So I'm still though stuck on this sound. I've never had this problem. I don't know, it, it just doesn't recognize any sound card, there's nothing. So what I will do is um update the system once again. Maybe that helps. I really hope it does, because this is just a weird bug. I've never had that happening, so that, that it doesn't really recognize anything, you know. It's 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 no sound card. Nothing. Very weird. So here it's downloading a different image once again. Um, and I hope it's fixing it somehow. Although, don't quote me on that. So, I'm in OS 10. You might ask, why are you in OS 10? You're supposed to be in Linux! Yes, just chill for a moment. I needed to hundred percent sure what power book this is because this sound driver is driving me nuts and I found this website that told me something I had no idea about <sighs> because as I said it always worked and of course it didn't fix itself with the update what did I expect so the SND AOA sound driver is apparently the one we need because it supports these machines and the SND Power Mac is used with older Macs. So, yeah, this is probably loading the wrong stuff. Now, what's so funny is that it says it was included and support for machines with a layered ID, whatever that is, was removed. So it has no longer conflicts. This page is historic. No, mate. It's actually quite accurate because it doesn't work here. So let me try to tr troubleshoot. I just hope it loads the right. Now I hope it loads the wrong so I can correct it. Because if it loads the right, I have no idea why it doesn't work. So I think we're on our way. This is here the modprobe.deblacklist.local.configuration 
And here, when I open it first, all of this, which apparently we need, was blacklisted, and this line was not even here. So now what I did is I uh, commented out all of this, so that it, this is not blacklisted, because this is the one we need, as, as, as we found out, the SND AOA, whatever that means, and the SND Power Mac is the one we don't need that should be blacklisted. So this is the first part of the process. So we save that. And now we go to the second part, back into modules. Oh yeah. So here we got all of this shit, added all of this, and I uncommented this because apparently, you know, that's what we don't need. So I just, you know, left it. And our PMU battery. So, I have no idea if this works. We'll save it and we'll reboot this thing. And just hope that it doesn't throw us a million error messages in the face. Oh, yeah! We finally got something. It detects a sound card. Nice! So let's just go into this fucking GNOME ELC mixer. And here we go. Yes, very nice. So here is the problem. The one that's, you know, only supposed to occur and not with all of this sound bullshit. But anyway, we got that figured out. So let's go into music here and start playing this song. And while it's playing, we unmount it and we bring the speakers back to life. What did I say? Unmount? I mean, make it work. <laughs> Can't speak anymore. So let's go here. And when we turn this up, up. Huh? Nah, it can't be. What? No! Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Is it playing? Yep, I, heard, I hear it. I hear it. Took a little second to get it going. But it's still very quiet. Baby steps, guys. Yep, but that's all the way. So we need this. We need this louder. Okay, it's good to set it in the middle so it doesn't get distorted. Or here maybe. Very good. So now we got this. I think it's this program. I just hate this program so much. We'll kill it and replace it with VLC very quick. Alright. It's looking very good. Here's the master volume. Yep. It's kind of quiet. Hmm. You need to adjust that a bit. But you know, it's what's so good is that <laughs> I finally have sound. Yeah, I will play around with this a bit. So, I install Synaptic because that's the one package manager you want in Linux. And here is this stupid rhythm box, so I checked it for killing. Oh no, I. Not reinstall. Delete. Completely delete. Kill it. Dead. Yes. I don't want that. That's just annoying. We only want VLC. That's a good player, but not this. This is only resource intensive, and if we want something, then it is definitely not resource intensive on this system. So. 
That is gone. Very good. But we're not done yet uh, with the sound because it still hasn't got a working microphone and I think this is gonna be easy because the microphone is unjacked so we check it and now should it actually do something yep see Good. I will restart the sound uh, recorder because I think it can't handle this immediate change. Or just to be sure. Good. So. Oh, okay. It opens up this. Fine. Hello, hello, this is an awesome test. Very good. Even the keys work for the volume. So it's all the way up. Hello, hello, this is an awesome test. Very nice. We got a working microphone only from checking this very good we're getting there so what are we going to do next we got an almost perfect system we got working Wi-Fi Bluetooth uh, sound microphone even the sleep wake works sort of okay so all we can do now is actually just make it faster and make refinements and speed it up a bit. So as you can see, I've got here the system monitor open and without anything running, the OS, the Unity Desktop Plus, the OS needs 258 megs, which is pretty darn amazing. I mean, that's, that's already a pretty good figure. However, this only has one gigabyte of RAM, as you can see. So we want this to go down we want less ram usage as little as possible now yes the perfect uh candidate would be of course lxd but i'm just so sick of lxd i've used it so many so many times i've stared at this ugly screen so many hours so i'm <laughs> i'm thinking of something different something that doesn't look as ugly but still gonna you know be a little easier in the system as you can see in the in the idle we only we actually use already almost half the processor and uh, when we go here sort of as you can see it ramps up to 87 only to bring up this translucency thing it looks so beautiful but you know that's unfortunately not very usable with a machine like this so what we'll do is install a different um a different desktop environment but it's still gonna be the uh, GNOME. This is the one we want. GNOME panel. That's kind of the classic uh, Linux desktop what they used to have. Good, so let's install this. Now a good al alternative for this is uh, XFCE. It isn't as ugly as LXD um, and has sort of a, a dock by default. Uh, but it's also very efficient and it's even based on LXD I think sorta but don't really I'm not sure don't quote me on that but it's uh, it's very similar but I think it's better but anyway we'll go with this different desktop style just because I've seen the XFC and LXD so many times uh, and on slower system because this is a 1.5 gigahertz or for example a 1 gigahertz or slower 700 megahertz like my eMac or something I would not, not even use this I would, I would just go with LXD to make it so, so, sort of useful, you know. Um, but here we have a little RAM and little processor, so um, we can actually use a more modern, I wouldn't say modern, but just a more evolved, evolved desktop. Unfortunately, the Unity is just not, not cutting it on here. So we are here at the old school desktop and yes, it does look sorta old school, 
but as you can see, the difference it makes is just incredible. We only have here 23% of CPU usage and only 185 megabytes of RAM uh, in the idle, which is just uh, pretty impressive because previously it showed, as you can see, 42% and over 280 megs. It's a good 100 megabyte more RAM and a lot more CPU usage, so. But yes, this menu is old school. And I don't know if I could use this on day to day. I was never the biggest fan of this, but it works pretty good. And you know, it's pretty simplistic and it gets the job done, but I wouldn't really call it awesome, you know. Also, I would kind of configure it that this bar, which shows the open programs, kind of shows it here and not wastes this line here uh, on the bottom. But uh, that's just personal. So, we've got here a Bluetooth configuration file and uh, here it says initially powered true and we'll put it to false so I don't always have to manually disable it on startup because you know, who uses Bluetooth in a power book all it does is waste power so we'll do that and save that and as you can see the power indicator the battery indicator is already gone again because this is a very glitchy piece of shit and I tried to uncheck show time percentage and all it did is you know pretty much kill the hole so I hope it's whoops saved it so I hope the battery indicator is back when it reboots I think it will be but you know this is how life goes so I'm also curious that uh, if it now disables the Bluetooth. No, not suspend. No! Now I can show you the bug. You can see, I, I press suspend and it suspends. Good. It is in suspend mode. It's kind of a. Yep. And now. When you wake it up, look at this, glitches out, oh it isn't as bad as in Unity, okay, because in Unity it used to have a big stripe here and here, but you can see it's booting up back and it's it's back to being normal, that, that went way better than with Unity, oh my god, because with Unity what it would do is completely have a bar here and here. Maybe it works when I do this. Still on? Yep, now it turned off. Good. Now it's in sleep. Okay, it can, works pretty fast. Wow. Okay, yeah, now it does this. Very funny. Uh huh. Back in sleep. Okay. Ah, you need to kind of hit it twice so it knows that it's going back to work. Ah, it's a little buggy, but it's still not as bad as with the Unity desktop. So that's fine. You know, that's something you have to deal with. I think you could figure it out, but I have no idea if if this is getting any better because initially it does work. You know, it does respond from sleep. It just needs a little time and then it's back to normal so you know it's 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 not a big deal as you can see i am in open firmware why am i in open firmware well because i want to show you something here is a command and when i hit that it should uh, show us the grub bootloader now i found out that you can't actually run grub on um on a power PC, as you can see, there it is. There's Grub. Yes, awesome. So I thought, yeah, let's get very quickly rid of this ugly, stupid ya yeah, boot bootloader that they usually have by default. But then I figured something out. As you can see, it doesn't work that perfectly with OS 10 partitions. As you can see, here we have the Mac OS 10 32 bit and 64 bit. This computer is not 64 bit, so it's gotta be this one, right? Right? We'll hit enter. Oh, error. Error. Unknown command. Well, that's bad. Let's try 64. Maybe that works. 
No, same error here. Hmm. So I think this only works with Intel Max. Um, but for some reason here, this works just fine. So you could set this as a default. And if it would boot OS X, I would have done it immediately. But since, uh, you know, this, this has problems with OS X, um, I have to stick with the Ya boot, unfortunately. So, my mates, I think we are done here. Here is a PowerBook G4 15-inch running Linux, Ubuntu 12.04. And to show you that it's even useful for something, I've got our two videos. This one is very low quality. You can see it starts uh, in this very small little preview window. Um, but if I make it bigger, this low quality video is perfectly playable. But this is low quality, of course. Um, I've got another one here. You might know that. <laughs> And yeah, that's that's a little more choppy. You can see. Um, and we're having here a little glitch. Don't know if that's from the video or not. But yeah, that's more or less smooth. I also have installed LibreOffice. Unfortunately, the latest version we get for PowerPC is only three. I don't like this version, at least not for Windows, but I think on Mac or Linux, on Linux I think it's fine. Mac it also not, it's not also not so great, but uh, yeah, that's the one you get. Um, if you don't like this or want this, you would need to go with AV Word or or anything different. There are a lot of out there, but uh, I, I usually use LibreOffice and Firefox. Yeah, I was wrong thinking that these Mozilla guys are so awesome. I guess they stopped actually developing Firefox for PowerPC. I mean, it, it's okay, you know. I, I No, Firefox has here the release 39.0.3. And the latest Firefox release is 61.0.1 at the state of this video. So yeah, it's already quite of some versions behind. However, if you go on OS 10, the latest Firefox is 3. So this is definitely still still a big leap. And it's not like this browser is uh, out of date, you know. Uh, it still displays everything. Of course, YouTube and stuff is not going to be great. Because this is an old computer and it's PowerPC. And you know the drill with YouTube and PowerPC. Uh, so we will try it nevertheless. Four machines already maxed out. Uh, what are we gonna search for? These trend videos are usually so epically shit that I just don't want to waste any time looking at them. Ah, uh, not even the video. There it is. Good. Let's try to play it. Let's see what it does. Sorry, you got a phone call. So now let's try. Mm, it's about 0 0.5 frames per second. <laughs> well, not really great. But anyway, you know, what did you expect? Anyway, this is an old ass computer in an old with an old, out-of-date architecture. Still cool though that it displays stuff. That's that's pretty good still. Um, when we're talking graphics acceleration, I have no idea really, honestly. Um, I don't know. Uh, this, this is one of those mysteries that maybe some awesome hacker will probably resolve. 
but you know it's uh, it's this this graphics card. I don't know if there's a driver. Uh, I, I remember looking at this, but um, I never really was successful. So here you go, guys. Anyway, this is. I mean, here you can see driving the window is actually sort of smooth. So for for most tasks, if you're not doing anything intensive, it's gonna be it's gonna be working. Even the function keys all work. So, also just try it around a little bit. The trackpad has two finger scrolling enabled. You could even do that in the settings, which is awesome. Didn't expect that to work. The function keys all work, as you can see, uh, turning down the monitor, brightness and up. It works, same with the volume keys, already demonstrated that. Caps lock, oh, of course, works. Yeah, uh, that's the backlight keyboard work. No, the backlight keyboard for some reason doesn't work. That's very weird. It says it's all the way up. Doesn't matter which key I press. <laughs> but at least it knows that it's supposed to illuminate the the backlight keyboard. I mean, that could be an issue for some guys. For me, it's really not a problem. Do all the ports work? Well, you would need to check if the DVI works, but I remember I actually did that in the past and it worked. Um, the S-Video, I have no idea. The LAN works, the Firewire works, the USB works. The headphone jack works, I tried that before. The microphone jack, I don't know, but the microphone works. The speakers work. Even the sleep-wake sorta works, as you saw. The DVD drive works. Yeah, what else to say? The monitor works. Uh, so everything, for the most part, works. It's not working fast. It's not working refined. It's not working efficiently. But it's working. <laughs> so, to conclude this, what, what do we say to this PowerBook G4 15-inch Linux Odyssey? Well, should you do it? Uh, that really depends on you. You should really not do it if you're not experienced and if you're not patient because this is very trial and error. And this is only particularly this machine, you know? Um, my 17 inch power book, for example, wouldn't even boot this CD. And it's still a power book, so stuff looks pretty much different on desktops. On my eMac, for example, uh, the sound works fine. Um, and other stuff works fine, but there's just a whole different other problems with the sleep wake and the CPU fan going nuts all the time and You know, it's th these are these things you have to put up with and you have to dive around in in the configuration files and try enabling here and there as you can see we, we did it with the sound and you have to research a lot and it's exhausting and in the end, you know, is it really worth it? I really don't know. It's a, it's only a hobby for me. I like getting stuff running. You know, it's cool to to say you got it done. It's cool to see it running, and you know that's that's I think the only purpose I have personally. But it's still cool to share it with you guys. I hope you like this video. It certainly was fun for me, and I now have uh, working Linux on my PowerBook again, which is awesome. I haven't had that in years, so. Yeah, thank you for watching this video and see you later.